Now, let's try to understand some important uh, points relating to the aggregate claim distribution in case there is a reinsurance. Here, I would like to look at uh, two major forms of reinsurance. One being the proportional form of reinsurance and the other one being the excess of loss. Of course, though there are various other forms of reinsurance, let's try to understand from these two perspectives. Now, when I look at uh, proportional reinsurance, probably uh, there is nothing much for us to work out. The reason being, the whatever are the claims, they are settled by the insurer as well as reinsurer in some agreed proportion. Right? So, the distribution whatever the insurer is paying versus whatever is the reinsurer has to pay, the distribution of the claims, uh, the distribution of both the number of claims as well as the amount that needs to be paid involving both the insurer as well as the reinsurer will remain more or less the same. Because the proportion is uh, predefined, right? Probably if, uh, the, if I say that the retention limit is alpha percent, which means for every claim, the insurer is going to pay alpha percent of it and reinsurer is going to pay 1 minus alpha percent of it. So if I say the individual claim amount is XI, then... The, the, from the insurer's perspective, the claim amount is alpha times xi and from the reinsurer's perspective, the claim amount is 1 minus alpha times xi. So even at an aggregate level when you are looking at S being the aggregate claims, the insurer's portion of it is alpha S and the reinsurer's portion of it is 1 minus alpha times S. So in proportionate reinsurance, there is nothing much of a different distribution for insurer and the reinsurer. But on the other side, when I start looking at excess of loss based reinsurance, if you recollect the amount, whatever the insurer is paying for the claim, let's say XI is the claim, what did we talk about in an excess of loss? If Xi is greater than some minimum, uh, uh, whatever is uh, the retention level, the insurer would be paying only M and the reinsurer is going to pay Xi minus M, whatever is the difference. But if Xi is less than M, the insurer is going to pay the full amount Xi and reinsurer is going to pay a zero. So if you look at the kind of payments, probably uh, from the insurer's perspective, with this excess of loss reinsurance, and that too with a retention level M, I can very well say that the insurer's payments uh, for an individual claim, YI, it is the minimum of either XI or M. If Xi is greater than M, he'll pay. Uh, if Xi is greater than M, he'll pay M. If Xi is lesser than the retention level, the payment is going to be the claim amount itself. So this is what comes out as the typical individual claim from an insurer's perspective, which means the aggregate claim amount from an insurer's perspective is nothing but y1 plus y2 plus so on yn. Similarly, when I look at it from a reinsurer standpoint, <coughs> his payment is maximum of 0, comma xi minus m because if xi is less than m, he is not paying anything and if xi is greater than m, he is paying the difference between the two. So from his perspective, if you are looking at the aggregate claim, 
it's going to be Z1 plus Z2 plus Z3 plus so on Zn. Now, this is where we need to understand the distributions part. If I assume that N, the number of claims, right, follows some kind of a distribution, let's say the number of claims follows a Poisson distribution with a parameter lambda, then what we are saying is SI, which is the aggregate claims, that is going to follow a compound Poisson distribution with a Poisson parameter lambda. And the individual, ith individual claim amount is yi. Same thing in case of, uh, in case of uh, uh, reinsurer also. I can see that uh, SR is going to follow a compound Poisson distribution with a Poisson parameter lambda. And the ith individual claim amount is za. But this is where there is a possibility that in case of ZI explicitly, even though there is a claim, it might very well be possible that the payoff is zero. Right? Uh, the, the, the claim amount could still be zero, even though there is a claim that is occurring because some claims may not even be settled by the reinsurer at all because their value is much lesser than M. So, uh, even the major thing, one more important point to look at in this dimension is the N, which is the number of claims. Probably the insurer would be knowing the number of claims with accuracy, but the reinsurer may not be knowing the number of claims at all. He might be knowing only those claims which are greater than M because they are the ones which are passed from the insurer to the reinsurer. So he may not be aware of the other claims. So he can't even uh, predict what is the total number of claims N. So the distribution, whatever uh, the reinsurer is having, is a completely different distribution for N because he might be knowing only those claims which are above the retention level and uh, uh, it may not be possible that the insurer will notify all the claims to the reinsurer. So that is one important cache that we need to understand in this entire process. The N may not be the same in both the cases, right? Now, Let's take a simple example. Now, when I look at an, a simple example, let's say the individual claim amounts, individual claim amounts, they are following a uniform distribution between 0 to 2000. Means any value is very much possible. And the annual aggregate claim, right, the aggregate claim amount is typically uh, following a compound Poisson distribution with uh, Poisson parameter lambda equal to 10. And here there is, let's say, an excess of loss reinsurance. Retention level is 1,600. So anything above 1,600, let's say is passed to the reinsurer. Now, in this case, I want to look at the complete distribution aspect, especially the mean, the variance, skewness, both insurer as well as the reinsurer under this kind of an agreement, right? Now, let's, uh, let's try looking at how simply uh, we can go ahead with this. Right, let's, uh, now I'm looking at aggregate claims SI, as well as SR. Now let's find out the expected value. Expected value of SI. We know that uh, SI is nothing but Y1 plus Y2 plus so on up to Yn. Right? So here, if I am looking at expected value of SI, it is as good as, okay, as long as the uh, the claim amount is between 0 to M. The expected is X times F of X dx. And if the claim amount is more than M, 
right? Uh, if the claim amount is more than M, I'm paying M only as fixed. So M times the probability that the loss is or claim amount is greater than M. Now here, if I'm looking at what is F of X, the individual claim is following this kind of a distribution, in uniform distribution. So the F of X for me is 1 by B minus A, 1 by 2000, 0 0.0005. Right, 1 by 2000, 0.0005. So let me integrate this uh, over this uh, overall stuff. 0 to 1600, 0 0.0005x dx plus m is 1600 and probability that xi is greater than m Right, uh, xi is greater than m is 400 divided by 2000, which is 20%. So, 0.2. So, if I look at this, okay, 0.0005, x squared by 2. So, x squared by 2, I am integrating between 1600 and 0, plus 320. So this uh, becomes 1, 2, I mean, if I'm looking at it, 16 square is 256. 256 by 2 is 128. 1, 2, 8, double zero, double zero, into 0 0.0001 into 5 plus 320. Now I can have Okay, there are four decimals, so 128, 128 into 5, 128 uh, into 5, giving me 640 plus 320, 960 is the expected value of yi, individual claim, sorry, this is not for the aggregate claim, this is for an individual claim expected expected claim amount for an individual claim is 960 now and now that we are uh, going ahead with the uh, expected aggregate claim which is uh, nothing but expected value of n times the expected value of uh, yi so n is already 10 we have got it uh, as uh, a poisson parameter here so expected value is 10 and expected value of yi is 960. So overall 9600 is the expected value of the claim which the insurer is going to pay. Right? And overall what is the expected value? If I am looking at the overall expected amount, expected value of s, I could see it as expected value of n times the expected value of x. Now, I could clearly see that the expected value of n is 10 and the expected value of x is 1000 because it's a uniform distribution between 0 and 2000. So, overall expected value is 10,000. Out of which the expected value of payment for the insurer is 9600. So I could clearly see that the expected value of uh, the reinsurer is 400. I can do it through this way. Or probably I can adopt the similar kind of a procedure from the reinsurer's perspective also. From the reinsurer's perspective, if the claim is anywhere between 0 to M, it is 0. And if the claim is between m to 2000 right if the claim is between m to 2000 whatever he is paying whatever he is paying it is nothing but it is xi minus m if the claim is between m to 2000 he is paying x minus m 
and again f of x dx. Right is paying x minus m f of x dx. Now all I could take is here the m is already taken as so what I can very well do is I'll subtract the m so I'll take let's say x minus m equal to some y it comes out like dx equal to dy so because x minus m is y So I can very well make it so here so if I am saying m to m so y is from 0 right if I substitute x equal to m and this is 2000 minus m. Okay, 0 to 2000 minus m, y, or probably let me uh, keep it as it is, between 1600 to 2000, x minus m, f of x dx. Now, f of x, I know it is 0 0.0005. So it's as good as saying integrating between 1600 to 2000, 0 0.0005x dx, uh, x dx minus integral 1600 to 2000, m is what? 1600. 1600 into 0.0005, which is... 1600 into 5 is 8000 and uh, so it, this is becoming as 0.8. So overall now we can see 0 0.0005 times x squared by 2, right? x squared by 2, 2000 squared is uh, 4... Uh, 4 followed by, uh, I mean, uh, 4 million. 4 million by 2 is 2 million. Minus 2.56 million by 2 is 1.28 million. Minus whatever is coming out, uh, uh, 0.8 times 2000 minus 600, which is 400. So overall, if I am looking at now, this is nothing but 100 and 200 minus 128, which is 72. Minus 0 0.8 times 400, which comes out to 320. Again here, <coughs> 72 into 5, 360. And uh, four zeros are going up. So this is coming out 360 minus 320, which is 40. So for ZI, expected value of ZI is coming to 40. And when I want to know expected value of uh, SR, which is expected value of N times expected value of ZI, which is working out to 400 itself. So either I can take the total and subtract from the total or I can go with this kind of a procedure. So as far as the expected value is concerned, we could have calculated it quite comfortably. Now, we will try looking at uh, expected value of yi squared so that I will compute the variance. Right, expected value of yi squared from the insurer's perspective, yes, 0 to m, x squared times f of x dx plus m squared times probability that xi is greater than m. So directly it is coming out like 0 0.0005 times 
x cube by 3. Sixteen hundred to zero plus sixteen hundred squared. Probability of uh, x i greater than m is going to be point two. So I could very well uh, simplify. Okay, if we are uh, trying to simplify this, one thousand six hundred. Q right let's take it as 1600 Q and multiply it with uh, 0 0.00 multiply it with uh, 0 0.0005 and divide by 3. So this is uh, working out to some 682,000 666.67 plus 1600 squared 1600 squared multiplied by 0 0.2 512000. So overall, if I am adding it up, right, if I am adding this, working out to 682.66.67. So this is working out to 1.194 million. So this works out to expected value of yi squared, right? Now, the same logic probably if I am looking at uh, if I am looking at expected value of uh, yi squared. So, if I am really interested in the variance of the entire, so all I could uh, take is 10 uh, expected value of n times expected value of yi squared working out to another 10 times that, working out to 11.946 million. So this works out to the variance of uh, the aggregate claim amount for the insurer. Similarly, when I am doing the coefficient of skewness, I can do it as expected value of xi, uh, yi cube. The same exercise I can do with the expected value of yi cube, making this as x cube and making this as m cube. The rest all remaining the same. Right, so I am getting uh, expected value of yi cube and the same thing, uh, whatever uh, we are working out, uh, 10 times the expected value of yi cube will give me the skewness. And uh, simply when I want the coefficient of uh, skewness, all I am doing is expected value of yi cube. I divide it by the expected value of yi squared overall to the power 3 by 2. That will give me the coefficient of skewness. Now similarly, when I have to uh, go for expected value of zi squared, to find out the variance with respect to the reinsurer. Now again, I am doing the integration between m and 2000. x minus m whole squared times f of x dx. Now the same logic, probably f of x we already uh, know. So I can very well integrate between m and 2000. Uh, Point zero 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 five x squared or probably I can uh, very well take x minus m equal to y dx equal to dy right 
now all i can do is uh, instead of integrating it from m to 2000 i'll integrate it between 0 to 2000 minus m y squared 0 0.0005 dy now probably i'll get 0 0.0005 y cube by 3 y cube by 3 okay y cube y uh, here y cube by 3 i integrated between 400 and 0 because m is 1600 so i could very well simplify 0 0.0005 times y cube 64 double zero double zero double zero divided by three so this simplification will give me the expected value of uh, z i squared and when i am doing the variance of sr it is nothing but expected value of n times expected value of z i squared which is working out to 10 times the number that we have got through this mechanism that comes out as the variance of SR. Same logic I can go ahead with uh, skewness and the coefficient of skewness also. So that's how we can uh, simplify in terms of the calculations uh, given these three major aspects. All right. Now, here comes a slightly different way of looking at it. Look at from the reinsurer's aggregate claims. Right? Look at it from the reinsurer's aggregate claims. We said SR is nothing but Z1 plus Z2 plus Z3 plus Zn. But what we really are seeing is i mean this z1 and z2s in some cases it could be pure zeros also so this was looking more and more artificial so this is the reason we wanted to really modify it in such a way that it is w1 plus w2 plus wnr nr is only the non zero claims that are received by the reinsurer so only those claims that came to the reinsurer that are non zero in terms of payment so this is where nr may be much less than or equal to n could be much smaller only those claims which the insurer has uh, insurer has passed on to the reinsurer get come into picture now from this probably if we can recollect uh, that whatever is this w i this is having a density function in this case the g of w is nothing but f of w plus m divided by 1 minus of f of m where w is greater than 0 so here when we are primarily uh, looking at the distribution of sr we also need the distribution of nr only once i know the distribution of uh, nr then only the distribution of uh, sr comes into picture and if you see the nr is i can write as some i1 plus i2 plus i3 so on i n i i is either 1 or 0 if the reinsurance has happened it will be 1 and if the reinsurance has not happened it is going to be 0 so it is more like an indicator variable so the summation of all these i's is going to give me my n right now this is where i can look at the probability that something the i i is equal to 1 is same as the probability that the claim amount is greater than the aggregate uh, the retention limit so in this example probably it is 0 0.2 right the probability that the aggregate claim is greater than the retention level so that is when the ii is going to become 1 so the probability that ii is going to be 1 is 0 0.2 and the probability that ii is going to be 0 is 0 
Now, this is where I could very much look at it as a kind of a, a, for each ii, it is either a Bernoulli distribution with a probability of, uh, I mean, with n as 1, or probably you look at it as a binomial distribution with uh, n as 1 and uh, the probability as p, which is 0.2. And nr is having a compound Poisson distribution because n is, n is uh, having a Poisson distribution, nr is having a compound Poisson distribution. And here I could see, because, sorry, uh, here, I is uh, typically uh, uh, having a binomial distribution. So this is where I could go with the moment generating function, mi. What is the moment generating function for uh, a binomial distribution? It is p e power t plus 1 minus p. Now what we are simply saying is, in this case, we have said the probability of success is around 0.2. And we also have uh, the moment generating function for, let's say, for the aggregate, for the summation, right, MNR. It is nothing but MN log MI of T that we have already seen for a compound distribution. How can I very well get? So from here, if I'm going ahead with that earlier uh, example itself, I could very well see, I could very well see that SR, one, it's a compound Poisson distribution. Now the Poisson parameter is just 0.2 times the lambda, which is only 2. And from there, what I could see is g of w is f of w plus m divided by 1 minus f of m. So this becomes 0 0.0005 divided by 0.2 becomes 0 0.0025. So this is as good as now the wi is following a uniform distribution which is lying between 0 and 400, giving the expected value of Wi as 200. Now, if expected value of Wi is 200 and the new revised lambda is 2, so expected value of SR is nothing but expected value of n times expected value of Wi comes out as 2 into 200, which is same as 400. Similarly, I could compute the expected value of Wi squared from the same mechanism and, and try computing even for the Wi cube. Whatever, even if I am doing this kind of a mechanism or the original kind of a mechanism, it's going to lead me to the same result. But what we really need to be comfortable in all these things is, in case there is a, a reinsurance, how do we typically uh, take into consideration the, the, the aggregate, uh, dis aggregate uh, loss distribution for both the reinsurer as well as the original insurer? This calculation should simplify the entire process behind it, right?